I would like to ask all the women in the audience to stand up. I want to give everybody a round of applause because you guys are leading the way in all of this and it's all important. So thank you. It's gonna take women to change the laws and we can't do it without you guys. So thank you. And now I guess we can open to Q&A. So if anyone has a question. Oh, right, hold on. This question is for Sabrina or anyone else on the panel. Um, there's been a lot of academic interest lately in alcohol prohibition. A book came out a few years ago called Dry Manhattan. And people who study alcohol prohibition know that one of the key uh, movers in ending alcohol prohibition was, uh, I think, a group called the Women's Organization for National Prohibition Repeal. Have you studied the lessons of alcohol prohibition and have some ideas of how exactly the normal women's alliance and women can, can end cannabis prohibition? Any ideas on that? Not only have I studied it, that was the basis for the foundation of the Normal Women's Alliance. Um, the woman's name was Pauline Sabin, and if any of you guys were at the awards yesterday, Anna Diaz Anna won the Diaz. Pauline Sabin yeah. Award. Yeah. Woo -hoo. That was the first step to recognizing more women. And yes, I once I realized that the WONPR existed and they really got the movement. A lot of these women were anti-alcohol originally. And then they started to see how out of control everything got with the saloons and their children and uh, all of the underground markets. So they organized and by after a year of organizing, she had a million followers, a million women signing up to do this. So that's our goal for next year. Yeah. Uh, Women's Alliance, what, what is the, uh, the biggest issues uh, that you feel facing that men can do to change how we relate to women in the marijuana industry? What are the biggest issues? What are the problems and what would you like to see change like that? You know that not it game? I just lost again. <laughs> you know, I don't know that we're in competition with men or that men are doing anything wrong or different or we want you to do anything different. I think we need to mobilize more women. There are a lot of us. Um, there need to be more of us. We are strong voiced. Um, we have, you know, we can multitask. We, we have this ability to reach an entire different demographic, and we haven't capitalized on that yet. So men, keep doing what you're doing, and we'll do it faster and stronger and harder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I remember one particular lesson from my sociology class where a white woman and a black woman are talking to one another. They say, well, when I, see, I look in the mirror, I see a white woman. Or, or I just see a woman, is what she says. The black woman says, when I look in the mirror, I see a black woman and all the things that come along with being part of an ethnic minority. I know this probably is uh, going to be a very difficult question to ask, but how are the differences for women who are of uh, minority and their attitudes towards cannabis? And how does that change? OK, I'll take that one. <laughs> that's a really good question and um, there's a lot of research that's been done on it I and mean, for those who are more learned than I when you look at the women's movement of the 60s you'll see that there was a fracturing um, primarily because women of color felt like maybe they had to choose between their color and their black or brown brothers and then their womanhood and the women's movement um, part of the reason why I am so uh, excited about the Normal Women's Alliance in this movement is because I don't want to see happen to the cannabis movement what happened to the women's movement in the 60s, which means that we need to promote diversity, we need to have a, 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 a mission of inclusiveness, 
um, and that includes men too, but making sure that we have a diverse representation and begin to discuss and keep an open discussion about how we are affected differently within the movement. None of us pretend to know all the answers, but what we do know is that we can create a space, a safe space for which women of all colors can come and talk about what their needs are, and then the Normal Women's Alliance through you know Normal will make sure that we provide a support network to support these women so that they can stand up in their, move, in their uh, communities and deal with the issues that they're facing. Hello, my name is Lauren Vasquez. Many of you know me, um, and I don't really have a question. It's more of a general comment and um, how appreciative I am that this alliance has started. I started a normal chapter six or seven years ago, and um, it was hard as a woman. It was hard to be in a space where we, we aren't really recognized. And I think at the 40th anniversary of normal, this is long overdue. And I would also like to say to the audience <laughs> that it's not about men versus women. It's just about um, if you're a man or a woman in this movement, um, think about the people next to you and think about recognizing them and think about all the people who go unrecognized, all of the women who stand up every single day, who go out there and put their faces out there and put their lives in jeopardy, their futures, their careers, their families. And I just want to say thank you so much for getting this started. <laughs> Hello, I'd like to add to some momentum and announce that everyone knows me in Colorado. My name is Susan Squibb, and I am having a press conference two weeks from now that features professional women in the cannabis industry. And the purpose is to show faces of women and mothers and to show mainstream media that this is not just a sausage fest of, you know, that we are familiar with. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so please, I did not get a ticket to the luncheon, so I would like anyone that's interested in knowing and participating to come talk to me after this. And so the, that inspiration comes from the need to mainstream marijuana, and so I want to help facilitate that. And so what are some specific points or things that we need to consider in mainstreaming the idea of marijuana acceptance in America? Well, in terms of industry, I think it is pretty well known that the Normal Women's Alliance has a very strong stance on respecting women in the movement and in the industry and is opposed to the sexual objectification of women in the industry. <laughs> to put it nicely. That is, I think, one of the biggest obstacles to bringing legitimacy to the marijuana movement. Um, when you have porn stars shooting videos in dispensaries, it's a little hard to tell people that this is a legitimate cause and a legitimate issue that we can win. Um, so I think it's important that you know, of course, we all agree it is a woman's right to do whatever she wants as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. And we are not here to fight anyone, I believe, in any lifestyle. But when it comes to changing public opinion in the mainstream in America, we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard. That's my answer. Ladies, thank you so much. I, I, uh, my name is Crystal Guess, and uh, I, uh, I helped launch the Women's Marijuana. I, ha I have kind of two things. I have a comment, and I also have a question for the panel. One of my comments is, uh, for anybody that's out there listening, either on the live stream, you know, uh, regarding women speaking out, uh, I, I, what um, Georgia said really touched home, uh, the fact that there are way too many women out there that are too scared to stand up and talk about this because they believe that by talking about this, they're breaking some sort of law. And at the end of the day, you are not breaking any law by speaking about cannabis and your support of it. And I think it's, it's, 
It's very important that we get this through their heads, that nothing bad is going to, it is our right as women, as citizens of this country, to stand up to these unjust drug policies that our government created and speak out against it. We're not breaking any law. You're not going to get arrested for saying you support it or even that you use it. And I really just wanted to get that off my chest. <laughs> Now, as far as my question for the panel, uh, this was something this, in regards to the SSDP, and uh, we, we, had, we were talking about, you know, there's some supporters of the age limit being lowered and, or, or keeping it at 21. And my personal opinion is, I was in the alcohol industry for, for 14 years, and nine years behind the bar, I wouldn't be surprised if I contributed to someone's death. I don't agree with, you know, of course, the, I, I, I'm a little iffy about the drinking age being dropped. As far as the cannabis using age being dropped, I fully support that, and here's why. If we give them, if we give people, if we give kids a reason, a, a, the same choice, choose between the illegal, uh, between illegal, illegally using cannabis or alcohol, what, if, we, if we were to lower the drink, uh, uh, cannabis using age to 18, now we are giving these kids the legal, safer choice yeah. to smoke cannabis in college instead of the, 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 the more dangerous choice to drink alcohol. What kind of, what, what, what efforts are we doing to bring this discussion forth? Because I think it's extremely important that we touch the parents of the high school students and letting them know your kids are about to embark on the most dangerous journey of their lives. They're about to go to college and have two choices. <laughs> between cannabis and, and alcohol. Should we give them the choice of, ha of lowering the age and giving them the choice of smoking cannabis instead of alcohol, which kills? Th thank you for your comment. That was great. Um, I just have a quick answer, I guess, and that would be um, to say that I'm actually, uh, well, I personally am an SSDP um, as an organization, is in favor of lowering the drinking age to 18. Um, <laughs> And we, I guess, we think we haven't um, officially put together a policy position on that, but I guess Stacia Cosner, private citizen, is saying that um, it might be a good idea to have the cannabis using age be at 18 as well. Um, you know, I think that imposing age restrictions is important. I think that that's a big, you know, um, part of this, and I think that, that we can hammer out those details once we've uh, passed some some uh, more sensible marijuana policies. Um, but I think that that does tie in for sure. So 18 is my short answer. Hey, I'm uh, Stephen Gutwillig with uh, Drug Policy Alliance, and I, I agree with, with something Lauren just said. This is, I, I think, one of the most important developments in the movement parallel to the expansion of, the, of leadership into and diversification of the movement into communities of color and organized labor, and that this is, this is up there and so long overdue. And I wanted to uh, follow up on something that Sabrina just said, because I'm a little concerned about the, uh, the amount of focus that there is simply on representation of women and making sure that women are at the table. There's a historic you know, reason that women have not been a part of this movement. And I'm really interested in hearing a little more about what the demands might be other than place at the table. And that historic reason, it has a lot to do with, you know, for lack of a better word, it's male supremacy in this movement, most notoriously represented these days by the kind of degrading representations of women that are, you know, that, that proliferate in the marketing of medical marijuana. And I, you know, I'm very interested in hearing beyond representation, what the demands can be and should be of women you know, for beyond their place at the table. <laughs> that is really a long question, and we're really pretty much question. wrapped up on our time. We, well, we have about a minute before our luncheon. Um, what are the demands of women to get involved in the movement? Um, that is a great question and very complex. Um, <laughs> um, it is multi-layered. I think that there's two ways to look at this. There's the inner movement issue versus the external movement issue. There's the people that are already on our side, that are already in the movement, and they have their own experiences with the male-dominated organizations that exist. Um, and there are 
there's a certain level of respect I think that has been lacking and I think one of the one of the biggest things would be to put women in leadership positions I think that is one of the demands that sister to sisters trying to form that we're all trying to form is that women need to be not only brought to the table but given a platform and a leadership position to be able to move agendas forward Really quick, I, I have a slightly different take on on kind of what that question was, and and I think that part of what what happens is one of the things that's so shocking and surprising is how people have a moral problem with with cannabis use, and 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 let's be honest, and please, men, don't take this as a bash against you, but a lot of the moral fiber and the and the, the moral contract in, in the family home comes from from the mom, comes from the maternal side. Not that men are amoral or any of those kinds of things, but oftentimes it's, it's women that, that move that along. And if women believe somehow that smoking marijuana is amoral, then we're never going to get legalization passed. And so we have to talk to women, have them understand the realities and the truth about marijuana, and that it isn't bad or wrong or amoral or illegal or upsetting. It's, there's nothing wrong with smoking marijuana, but if we don't convince those moms who don't currently participate in, in the cannabis industry or know anything about the cannabis movement, then, then we're not going to get the, the numbers that we need to make sure that, that cannabis is legalized. Well, thank you all for attending, and let's close the cannabis gender gap as soon as possible. Ladies, get involved. We're going, we're going to go off to the Women's Alliance luncheon, and I also want to mention to all of you, Steve Bloom is standing right here, Steve, and he has tickets available for tonight's Blue Bird Theater um, show for the Super Villains, only $4.20. Isn't that great? The luncheon is on the third floor for those ladies that are attending. 